Hi, my name is Jillian Rosado, and today I'm going to share a story with you that I've honestly probably only ever shared with my husband or my best friend. Um, I grew up in New Jersey, a, your typical Italian-Irish Roman Catholic family. Um, I grew up going to Catholic school, but for me personally, um, my knowledge of God and Jesus was what I learned in religion class and had to like get by with to get an A. It was nothing that ever really like hit me hard or I had a full understanding of. Um, but I went to Catholic school until seventh grade when my parents got divorced um, and at that time we moved and for a seventh grader at the time my world was flipped upside down. It was just completely the opposite of anything I was ever used to. Um, and as I grew up and became a teenager, I was rebellious, I would drink, I would do drugs, um, and I was constantly looking for people's approval. Um, I gained my value through other people's opinions of me. Um, so with that, my self-worth was all-time low. There were a lot of voices in my life and in my head telling me that I wasn't good enough, so I said, all right, let's not be good enough then. Um, my experience with drinking and drugs went from my teenage years into my early 20s. Um, literally anything you put in front of me, I would have done just to escape reality, to not deal with what was really going on in my life. So in my early 20s, I met my first husband. Um, I was a bartender at the time and we got married and I had Hunter and everything changed from that point for me. Um, being a good mom was the most important thing in the world to me. So when Hunter's father and I decided to get divorced when he was two, um, it was a chain reaction of a lot of things. My, I lost a cousin of mine to suicide and that was very traumatic for my whole family. And I started to spiral. Um, Still, being a good mom was my number one, but the weekends that Hunter was with his father, I was out drinking until I was blackout drunk. Shortly after that, I lost my cousin, who was one of my best friends, to a terminal illness, and that really hit me hard. And I think I never truly learned how to handle loss. So instead of dealing with my emotions and going through the healing process, I went in the complete opposite direction. And it all came to a head on December 13th, 2014. I had had a work Christmas party the night before. Those Christmas parties were known to be wild nights and it was another one of those. And the next morning when I woke up and the babysitter went home, I, Hunter was watching his Saturday morning cartoons, and I went out and I was extremely hungover. I had gotten really sick that night, probably one of the worst hangovers of my life. Um, and I went on the couch with him and I fell asleep. And I woke up hours later and I looked over and he was eating lunch. And I looked at him and he was seven. And he said, Mommy, you were sleeping and I didn't want to wake you up, so I just made myself lunch. And I've never felt more low in my life. And at that exact moment, something said to me, you need to stop, like this is as bad as it gets. So I did. I stopped partying, I stopped drinking, I stopped everything. Um, and my friend Kate had been inviting me to church because she was going to be playing drums at church. And something to me was like, just, it's Christmas. You're, you're a holiday funeral Catholic. Just go see her play drums at church for Christmas. So I did, and the pastor preached a message that really hit me, um, talking about you are worthy, you are more than what you realize. Um, and I bawled my eyes out and I walked out that day and I said to Kate, I'll be back next week. And I continued going to church. I continued learning more about myself. Um, I lost some friends in the process because I wasn't fun Jill out entertaining everyone every other weekend. Um, and I was fine with that. Uh, those close to me saw the change within me. 
Um, but it wasn't like an automatic thing. It wasn't like, okay, everything's great. Um, it was a learning process. Actually, the week after, the second time I had gone to church, uh, a girl named Vanessa Alcantara prayed over me. And I don't even know if she remembers this, but she spoke some words over me that like talked about my path and what I was stepping into. And I'm seeing those things now. Um, but it's a process. Uh, I married my husband. At the time it was a little difficult because my interpretation of a pastor's wife is I would have to wear a long skirt and carry around a 20 pound Bible and teach the children every Sunday. And that's just not me. Um, so part of my path has been redefining what a pastor's wife looks like, redefining what a Christian looks like. So it is a change, a gradual change. I'm still changing. I'm still learning what my path in life is. Um, and if it wasn't for the people around me and God's opinion of me, I don't know where I would be right now. Um, so I was a lost, drunk, lonely, people-pleasing, just bottom-of-the-barrel person. And today I'm married to the pastor who preached that message on December 21st, 2014. And my life has changed dramatically.